Hey, welcome to Science with Mike. Notice I'm in a different place? I'm in building 20, the automotive building. It smells like Y chromosomes up in this. And we're here to talk about vehicle restraint systems. Because I ain't calling it an airbag. You know why? They don't fill with air. Air would have oxygen in it, which would feed a fire. They actually inflate with nitrogen using something called sodium azide. So they should be called nitrogen bags, and I insist that's what we call them from now on. Repeat after me. Nitrogen bags. Hardly anybody said it. I guess I did kind of go outdoor the explorer there. The airbag, nitrogen bag, sorry, the nitrogen bag inflates using a compound, for classic ones at least, called sodium azide. Sodium azide is very unstable, not as unstable as touch powder, which we did in last week's episode, but if you heat it up enough, it'll decompose into sodium and nitrogen gas. Now here's the thing, gases take up about a thousand times more space than a solid or a liquid. So an ounce of this stuff will fill up about 15 liters, which is about two basketballs. And that's where the pressure that inflates the nitrogen bag comes from. Thanks for watching Science with Mike. Over in Building 20. Still a loyal Building 12er. District 12. Represent. So now let's kick it over to my esteemed colleague, Troy Singleton. Thanks, Mike. My name is Troy Singleton. I'm here in the automotive department at Sinclair College. And just like Mike mentioned, we are going to talk about airbags today. Nitrogen bag. Really? Science nerd? I got this. One of the things we talk about with airbags is the safety. Now an airbag should be in, used in conjunction with a seat belt. That's why it's the supplemental inflatable restraint system. Because the purpose of an airbag is to spread the force of the crash over a larger area and it's also designed to slow your body down so your body doesn't hit the steering wheel or the windshield very, very quickly, then you're gonna have injuries. Because in a crash, there are actually three collisions. You're gonna have where the vehicle hits the object, then you're going to have the occupants hitting inside the vehicle, and then inside the occupants, you're gonna have their internal organs are actually going to collide. Okay. Looking at the timeline, so an airbag has to be very, very fast. So, zero seconds, the collision occurs. Within 16 milliseconds, the sensors detect the crash and the severity of the crash. And then 